Welcome to Quick Beats Fast. I'm Quick Rick. Today we're headed to Moparty 2020 at Beach Bend Raceway Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Lots of cars, lots of race, and lots to see and do. At the end of the episode, we're going to have an exclusive interview with AAD Performance. That's right, Zach from AAD is going to talk to us about all their products as well as some new products coming down the line. You don't want to miss it. So get in, sit down, shut up, and hang on. my first Mo Party event and I was impressed. It's an annual event put on by Holly and was really well done. They had drag racing, autocross, thrill rides by Dodge, show and shine, a dyno competition, jumping generalese, and vendors galore. They were something for every Mopar lover. Keep in mind this was in September of 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic, so social distancing and mask wearing in crowded spaces was required. I think Mo Party did an excellent job of following the rules and encouraging people to stay apart and wear a mask without being overbearing. They had monitors in crowded spaces and cute signage throughout the facility that I got a kick out of. Well done, Mo Party. The first event I want to review is Autocross. Drivers could enter this event by itself or as part of the Grand Championship which included drag racing and 3S, which I'll explain next. If you've never seen autocross, it's a lot of fun. I've done it in my Hellcat when it was stock, and it was a blast. Essentially, it's a miniature road course laid out with cones. The object is to navigate the course as fast as possible without knocking over cones, which adds time to your score. Autocrossing wasn't just for the newer Mopars at Moparty. I absolutely loved watching the old school muscle navigate the course. Some of them were obviously dialed in for road course racing because they were surprisingly quick. Of course, some of the newer Mopars like the Bilstein Hellcat were also set up for autocrossing and their times showed it. If you've never done autocross, I highly recommend trying it at least once. It's inexpensive and available just about everywhere. If you've done autocross, let me know how you liked it in the comments. Another event that was held was called 3S. Essentially the driver had to launch the car, drive up and around a 180 degree turn, then back down and come to a complete stop at which point the clock stopped. For those of you who prefer to drive straight, there was plenty of drag racing with many different classes. Seeing the old school muscle cars that sparked my love of Mopars was a treat. I was paying particular attention to the Hellcat and stick shift classes because I had friends running in those. Stick shift class was heads up, while the Hellcat class was a bracket class. Here is Chad Firebend in the semifinals of the stick shift class. Chad, smoking tires off the line. Can he reel them back in? And... I hope he doesn't. 970 for Lee on the right lane, 960 on the left lane, so Lee's gonna leave one tenth sooner. Here is Lee Swift, who went on to win the Hellcat class. Get him, Lee. And Lee wins it, 974 to a 973. And finally, I wanted to include James Reed's stick shift class winning pass, simply because an Omni that runs low tens is bad in my book. James claims it runs nines, which is even more impressive. While I didn't race personally, I heard few complaints about the track as workers kept up with it throughout the day, dragging, scraping, spraying, and touching up between rounds. Just because Dan Van Horn, his Turbo Hemi Challenger, and the shot is cool, Here's a little slow-mo burnout from one of Dan's passes. Dan runs the Modern Street Hemi Shootout Series, a national series for any car running a Gen 3 Hemi motor. Check it out. One of the coolest things to watch all weekend were the Dodge Thrill Rides. Moparty attendees could ride shotgun with professional drivers as they drifted through a modified version of the autocross course. It was difficult to stop watching these folks. 
The sights and sounds of it were a visceral treat. Best of all was that these rides were free to attendees. All you had to do was get in line early enough to get a spot. I loved this particular run because they were so close to each other in a bit of a cat and mouse situation. Have you done one of these thrill rides? Would you? Let me know in the comments. One of the coolest cars on display was the famous Hemi Under Glass. There's nothing I can say about this car that can even do it justice, so I'll just let it speak for itself. There were a variety of Mopars in display throughout the weekend. Here are just a few, including some from Mr. Norm's. Sadly, Norm passed away this year. This Viper was particularly sexy with a lot of small touches that really set it off as a favorite for me. If you could have any Mopar, what would it be? A Viper has always been on my bucket list. Here's the famous Blackbird sporting the new 3-liter Whipple. I watched a dyno run of this engine a few months back where it put out over 1,600 horsepower. This unique beast was so out of this world that I had to film it. I don't even know what it is or what it was back in the day. So if you do, let me know in the comments. I don't know if it's just a show truck or if it's an actual racer but it looks like it would fly. That is a lot of motor for such a little vehicle. Sticking with the Hemi Orange theme, I had to throw in the General Lee. As a fan of the Dukes of Hazard series as a kid, I get excited every time I see one of these. There is one outside the Dukes of Hazzard Museum in Nashville that makes me smile every time I drive by. I imagine the show and the car started many people's love of Mopar. Were you a fan of the show? If so, let me know your favorite character, if you had one. Throughout the Moparty event, the General Lee did stunt driving shows and jumps. Watching the General Lee jump was on my list of must-do activities, but it conflicted with watching my buddies race, so I unfortunately missed it. I was super bummed. Hopefully next year I'll get to watch the General fly. Another intriguing car I found was the Paint Chip Cuda. This one-of-a-kind car was created by Tim Wellborn, based on a brochure that Chrysler put out in 1970. The marketing folks had created a version of the car showing the different trim, accessory, and color options that were available that year. The car in the brochure wasn't real, just something the graphic artists created. Wellborn brought the car to life, down to the wheels and tires, headers, and single wheelie bar. If you rewind and inspect the car, you'll notice the differences from one side to the other. I totally miss them in person. It truly is unique and very cool in its own right. And for the purists, the paint isn't actually on the car. The car was wrapped and the paint applied to the wrap. If checking out products and chatting with reps is your thing, Holly Mo Party had lots to see and plenty of folks to talk to. Just a few of the vendors included, well, of course, Holly, but also Summit, Edelbrock, Torque Storm, Bilstein, Renegade, Trick Flow, RC Components, 
and AAD performance, just to name a few. And as you would imagine, there was plenty of Moparty swag to be had. If you've enjoyed the episode so far, please like, subscribe, and click the bell. It really helps me out. Up next is the interview with Zach from AAD Performance. Zach has been kind enough to provide a discount code for all of my viewers. It'll be in the video description. Now, without further ado, here's Zach. Hey, we are here with Zach from AAD Performance. You guys know I love their stuff. So I wanted to get the expert's opinion, let us know what it is that he's got in store for us, what he already has for our Hellcat Trackhawk platform, as well as just challenges overall and anything new he's got coming down the pipe. Zach, talk to us. As you know, you already have our rear upper control arms, our, uh, our lower rear trailing arms, and our towings for the uh, modern uh, Charger and Challengers. These obviously all clear the, the 15 inch wheel setup, which is a big plus. There's no modification needed to them. And uh, these are our naturally aspirated or you can run them with a pro charger as long as you're running some style factory manifold. Uh, so any like the 646157 six, manifold. New, we have our new, this is for the WK2 SRT and Trackhawk guys. This is a rear tuning. Uh, they seem to have an issue where they want to bend under a hard launch. And so we made this and we also saved a little over a half a pound out of them um, nice. by just by just doing that. It's nicely pocketed. We give a provision to hold the the um, emergency brake cable in place as well. So it'll come with like a little uh, a little C clip and bolt. You can bolt it down similar to what we're doing with the ABS wires yeah, gotcha. on the rear toolings. We don't like using zip ties or anything like that. So. Um, this is, our, this is our Fiat shifter. I know there's probably not many Fiat guys out there, but these are our Fiat 500 shifters. And then our boost reference adapters. Uh, they'll work on any of the any of the six two cars. So any uh, Hellcat Red Eye Demon, any of that stuff. It'll also work on a TRX. So um, these are our catch cans. We've had them out for a long time. They're a nice feature because they're not a normal threaded one. It's just a oh, just turn your clip. It's just a twist lock there. So it comes off real nice when it's hot or, you know, even, there's not much room to work around in the engine bay. You can get to it very easily to drain it. And then we also have uh, a, uh, a four port design, so a two in, two out. And we also just recently developed a PCB valve system uh, for it. So for the Hellcat guys that have both sides, it doesn't cross draw across it. Now you only have to run one can and be able to capture both sides. We know one's technically a dry side, still gets some you know, These are our front upper control arms. We've had them out for a long time. It started with a polyurethane bushing and now we also offer our Spiriflex in that as well, which is a great joint. It's, it's great for, you know, any, any use, whether you're drag racing or a daily driver, a road course in the car, anything like that. You never have to worry about them squeaking or barking or anything like that, like you get from a hind joint. And that goes for all the Spiriflex bushings that are in any of our arms. Um, they're all developed around the same use. Here's a, here's a broken down, a broken down version of it. It's a stainless steel ball with some uh, Delrin crowns and these custom made Smalley wave springs back it up. So as, as that Delrin wears, it'll keep it tight around the ball all the time. So you never have to worry about getting them loose and they'll start, you know, squeaking or anything like that. Plus they're Teflon impregnated, so they're essentially self-lubricating. Good. And all of the, uh, all of the, the arms, your front arms, as well as the, the control arms and the toe are all adjustable, correct? Correct, yeah, yes. Yeah. So and you with your tab system. Amber and caster in the front upper control arms. Um, only with the Spiriflex, you could do camber and caster. Um, all the tabs carry through the whole product line, whether you're doing fronts, rears, tow links, whatever the case may be. They're all exactly the same size. Now, obviously, you know, we, we have them all numbered with the little notches on each side of the tab. So depending on how many notches and if the, if the, uh, if the notches are on the long side of the tab or the short side of the tab is what it does. Um, when it's on the long side of the tab, it makes the arm longer, which is adding positive camber. Or in the rear of the car, it's giving you toe in. When it's on the short side, it's giving you negative camber, and it's giving you 
you tow out. Here. With the fronts, it's just one on each side? Uh, there's actually four in the fronts. So oh, one on the, top and bottom. Yep, gotcha. Yep, top and bottom. So each arm takes four tabs. We recently changed the design of the rears um, mid last year, I believe. We took one of the tabs out. It used to have two tabs in it. Now, you know, we try to make our end customer's life easier, so we changed it. We went to a bigger, stronger hardware, and we went to a one-tab design that allows that when this is inside the car and it's under pressure, especially from the tow link, it will create an issue when you pull both bolts out, if it had two tabs in it, that the arm would kind of want to separate. Um, so we saw that, we recognized it, we went through, took one of the tab holes out and made it a slotted guide hole, and now it's one tab. So now you never have to unbolt it, you just crack this one loose here, and you just pop that one out, and you pull the tab out quick. Usually you can use a bolt or Allen wrench or whatever the case may be. I just pushed it back in after I had it out. Pull the tab out, put the new tab back in. And depending on which way you're going, whether you're you know, trying to get camber out or in, you would just pull on the knuckle or push the knuckle. You would line it up with the new hole in the tab and bolt it back in. So gotcha. makes it very simple. I've got the two tab older system for folks like me. Can we buy this? Yep, yep, this is an upgraded part. Usually when we do upgrades to parts, we try to make them work the best we can with our existing parts. Um, that is key, so this way, for somebody like you that wants to change to the newer style setup, you don't have to buy a whole new set of rear uppers. Um, you just, you buy the ends, we sell them with or without bushings, depending on you know how long ago, because at the time when we first released them, people had just bought their setups, and so we did them, okay, well if you have almost brand new bushings in it, take the bushings out of your old arm or you know your your old ends and put them in here um but yes this is a good this is a nice upgrade for anybody that has an older set of arms that does do some tab changes more frequently um they'll benefit from it for sure we're also talking about possibly putting uh, our spear flex joint in the outer end as well um get rid of the polyurethane out here it'll make it a little bit easier too when you're setting toe because you'll actually be able to rotate the, the knuckle, joint. you won't be fighting a bushing in the upper arm. Gotcha. These are our lower control arms, which are not yet for sale. You know, everybody keeps asking about them. Um, they're going to be a modular design as well. So this one has the provisions for a factory spring, where this one over here, if you're on like a true coilover setup, like a Viking Menser, or whatever the case may be, you can just run it here, and it saves you some weight by not having a spring pocket. They're already lighter than a factory one, but it saves even more weight by by not running that, so. How much weight savings is there with these? Those lowers are what, four pounds? Three pounds? Three pounds lighter than a stock one, so. We got them down to four, the factory one's set lighter. We're lighter than a factory tow link as well. Um, and the uppers, they forget the exact numbers they used to have them memorized, um, but we are lighter. Now, everything you have over here is all black. Correct. Can people get them in this color, or is, yeah, is that not an option? RA trailer. Yeah, yeah, you can get them in raw. The tough part becomes is that as a raw aluminum, it can, what they'd say, oxidize. So it'll kind of get like a whitish finish to it. And I have a lot of silver parts because I have a lot of test pieces, so we never set them to anodize first. I had decent success with putting ceramic coat on, just like a cheap, a cheap ceramic coat kit mm -hmm. online somewhere for 20 bucks only we paid 15 or 16 bucks for it. We ceramic coat the parts before they go in just to kind of keep them looking nice for like when we come to shows, people are on the car. And then we also offer custom colors as well. Uh, that all goes through our friends down at Billitech. So, you know, if you're a if you're a car show guy or you just like things matching, we can do that as well. You can pick from any of the anodized colors that Billitech offers. We don't stock them, it, you know, it does have a lead time based on we ship them down there, they send in their anodizer. When that color comes, it comes back to us. We finish doing the engraving and, and building of the arm and then they get shipped out. Well, Zach, I appreciate all of your time. As always, I love your stuff. And I love how knowledgeable you guys are and how helpful. Yeah, uh, so, absolutely. Uh, That's anybody's, what we're here for. Yeah, anybody's interested in parts. Uh, if you guys think of something that we don't have yet for our platform that these guys don't make, hit them up. They're always There's looking also, for something uh, new. I guess I'll let another thing leak here at the end of the video. Um, it's been kind of leaked a few times here and there, but anybody watching this, we are also releasing our lightweight front cradle 
for the Charger Challenger price. And how much is that supposed to save? Um, depending on your cradles, the older 06 to 10 cradles were a lot lighter than the newer ones. The newer ones, I believe they're just over 40 pounds. So we're somewhere, we're in the mid 20s right now and that's probably where it'll be as our final, as our final number. You're looking at somewhere around 17-ish pounds, 17, 20 pounds, depending on where our final number actually is. Uh -huh. That's a lot coming off the front of the car. Yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a few other features to it. You'll be able to move the motor back in the car. Um, you're going to be able to drop the oil pan without pulling the motor or dropping the key members. So there's going to be a lot of neat features about doing that. That'll help the weight balance and shifting the weight if yeah. you can shift that engine back. Yeah, absolutely. Two and a half inches doesn't sound like a lot, but with that much weight, That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. Well, I'm excited to see those parts out too. I'm sure I'll be grabbing all of that as they come out. But uh, thank you so much again, Zach, for all of your time, and I appreciate all of your knowledge. And uh, keep making those awesome parts for our platform. All right, you got it. Thank you. There you have it. Moparty 2020 and all the latest happenings at AAD Performance. Again, if you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and click the bell. Until next time, breathe, focus, and bring it. Bring it. Bring it big. Bring it bad. Bring it rough. Let's do stuff. Bring it fast. Bring it hard. Bring it strong. Bring it all night long. If you want to shy, step up and place your bed.